Hello and welcome back to my channel guys. Today we're going to talk on how to navigate, set up and specialize your computer in order for it to work perfectly fine and better with a dual CCD CPU. In this case we're going to focus on AMD so this would be very very much worth it if you have a 7950X 3D or a 9950 X 3D. The first things we, were, we would like to do is to get our chipset support. You can show here that I went onto the AMD official website. I put the chipset that goes with my motherboard. I download the AMD chipset drivers. You save it on your downloads folder then you're going to open it and then you're going to wait for it to do its work i put a little bit of a high speed uh, on the following window just because i didn't want to have you here waiting for a long time okay so you're going to see this familiar black window chipset software installer and this is very important because this will install the 3d vcache optimizer and basically what this will do is that when you open a game it will allocate that game to the ccd that has a vcache on it we speed it up here a little bit and this is basically the first stepping stone for us to have the full performance of our CPU. We'll also have to be using things like Game Bar, Xbox Game Bar, regardless if you have an Xbox account or not. Here's what it looks when it's successfully installed and then we just press restart. Now we're going to talk a little bit about MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is very important because it allows us to basically tune the minimum speed or frame rate that we want to have on our games, especially if we're going to use the async. We're not going to use the async compute for controlling the frame rate, but rather we're going to use the reflex that comes with NVIDIA. So when you install it, it's going to look something like this. I leave my power limit to 100. I don't want to overclock or do anything with the power regarding my graphics cards. I do change the fan speed. I'm going to show you how. So you make sure that you select your GPU there. You make sure to start with Windows and start minimized. Okay. Then we're going to go to fan. You can see that I enabled those two and then I create my custom curve. I'm very, very much interested in having the fans cooling the GPU. So there you have uh, for NVIDIA graphics cards, please disable um, the FB usage, BID usage, okay? Power percent so and power. You cannot monitor those because NVIDIA after a couple of milliseconds will give you a stutter. This is a well-documented issue. So please, please, please disable the monitoring on those little four options. Power percent, power, FB bus, and then you can also set up a button to do the toggle display, which is very important. So you can see your GPU temperature show on screen display. Very important for you to monitor things like how much am I using in terms of power. In this case, power only for the CPU because the graphics cards have an issue with NVIDIA. You want to check how much percentage is your CPU using, how much percentage of use is your graphics card being used okay and this is very important because it tells you if you are gpu bottlenecked or cpu bottlenecked or even a combination of both sometimes in certain areas you are bottlenecked on the cpu or sometimes on the gpu you can also click on detach and see all of the sensors from the gpu and then just for inter informational purposes never put the x you need to always minimize because if you put the x you actually quit um, msi afterburner Now let's go to Riva Tuner Statistic Servers. Very useful tool. You can see that I always put a start with Windows. Very important for me. Show on screen displays. It was going to show you, basically, if you see all my other videos, you're going to see how I have the information on my GPU and CPU. Uh, I, I'm testing the toggle button that I have. The detection level, you should always put low. The global is if you want to control like all the frame rates for anything that is not on the list additionally. So you can see that I have Smite 2. Apex and Apex on Drag X12 on different frame rates and global is any game that is not that basically. From here you're going to put and make sure that it starts minimized and the most important thing here is in changing this compatibility properties. Do not use async as it will introduce a lot of input delay into your system and your game and it would not be beneficial. Please use NVIDIA Reflex. It's very important to use and if you don't have NVIDIA Reflex there then unfortunately do not use Riva Tuner Statistics to control your frame rate okay because you're going to have severe input lag and we don't want that on any game that is competitive. Now, very important process lasso. This actually helps you convert or try to make sure that your computer is running like a dual system, like two different CPUs. So for example, I put the OBS, I put affinity, you can see always, and I put this always to the frequency CPU. So you can select CPU affinity. You're gonna click it there. And there you're gonna see CCD1 frequency. So basically I put everything that is not gaming always to the frequency CCD. So for example, my Logitech, G-Hub, OBS, Chrome, Discord, all of that is running on the frequency CPU. 
so I leave my cache CPU for gaming. So Apex and all the other games that I play, they always running on the cache CCD. So basically it is a, it is behaving more like a 7800X3D with an additional, let's call it CPU on the side. And because technically they are not mixing the two CCDs, if you don't use process that, so it, that probably would happen, okay? They would mix the CCDs and you would have some input latency there. But when you use this, you're kind of forcing how the schedule is going to work. I actually paid for this software. I believe it's extremely good and it definitely helped me a lot on how to capture my gameplay because I wouldn't, I was not taking a hit on the performance of my game. And this way you can make sure. Of course, I only did the minimum necessary. <clears throat> I did not want to change all the processes and separate them. But basically processes that I know that I'm using while I'm gaming, I put it on the frequency CCD. Okay, so I hope this kind of helps you. There's a free version to try. I was so enamored with it that I decided to pay. Resizable bar. Okay, so this is a setting that you have to activate typically on the BIOS of your motherboard. And if you don't know how to do that, then we will have to probably check that out on the manual for your BIOS or go in and try start looking for resizable bar. What I'm going to show you here is if you have it already installed, like if it's already enabled, okay, by default. So you go into device manager, you click on your graphics cards, you go to resources, okay, you click it there, and you should see something called large memory range. If large memory range is there, most likely you have resizable bar. Now there's another way too. You can go to NVIDIA control panel, we go here, and then you're gonna wait for that to open, and then you're gonna scroll down to the very bottom, system information. And then over there, you're going to wait a little bit. It's going to open. You're going to see resizable bar. Yes. And that's very important. Okay. That will give you a lot of benefit when you play with the game that basically takes advantage of this feature. Okay. So that's basically just a check on how to check that if you have it or not have it. Right. So now we're going to talk about game mode. So you need to have game mode enabled when you have a dual CCD because this, the way the Windows scheduler works, you have to have it. Okay. Now it's very important that you have also hardware accelerated GPU and variable fresh rate if your monitor supports it. So those three th settings, or at least two, the game bar and the hacks should be enabled. The power plan, funnily enough, uh, the way the Windows scheduler has it and AMD recommends it, you have to leave it on balance, okay? Do not put high performance or any other thing because if you put a high performance, then your frequency CCD will always be like the preferred one and we don't want that, okay? So just put it balanced so it works better with the scheduler. Have a good day and see you around.